Old news. When Julia comes, she sits by Stella's domain and watches the new baby. She barely talks to me. Stella doesn't talk to me either. She is too busy nuzzling Ruby. She is cute, little Ruby, with her ears flapping like palm leaves, but I am handsome and strong. Bob trots a circle around my belly before settling down in just the right spot. Give it up, Ivan, he says. You're old news. Julia gets out a piece of paper and a pencil. I can see that she is drawing Ruby. I move to the corner of my domain to pout. Bob grumbles. He doesn't like it when I disrupt his naps. Homework, Julia's father scolds. Julia sighs and puts her drawing aside. I grunt, and Julia glances in my direction. Poor old Ivan, she says. I've been ignoring you, haven't I? I grunt again, a dignified, indifferent grunt. Julia thinks for a moment, then smiles. She walks over to my domain, to the spot in the corner where the glass is broken. She slides paper through. She rolls a pencil across my cement floor. You can draw the baby elephant too, Julia says. I bite the pencil in half with my magnificent teeth. Then I eat some paper. Tricks. Even after Julia and her father leave, I try to keep sulking, but, it's no, but it is no use. Gorillas are not, by nature, pouters. Stella, I call. It's a full moon, did you see? Sometimes when we are lucky, we catch a glimpse of the moon through the skylight in the, fo in the food court. I did, Stella says. She is whispering, and I realize that Ruby must be asleep. Is Ruby all right, I ask? She's too thin, Ivan, Stella says. Poor baby. She was in that truck for days. Mac brought her from a circus in the, sa the same way he brought me, but she hadn't been there long. She was born in the wild like us. Will she be okay, I ask? Stella doesn't answer my question. The circus trainers chained her to the floor. Ivan, all four feet, 23 hours a day. I puzzle over why this would be a good idea. I always try to give humans the benefit of the doubt. Why would they do that, I finally ask. To break her spirit, Stella says, so she could learn to balance on a pedestal, so she could stand in her on her hind legs, so a dog could jump on her back while she walked in mindless circles. I hear her tired voice and think of all the tricks Stella had learned. Introductions. When I awake the next morning, I see a little trunk poking out between the bars of Stella's domain. Hello, says a small, clear voice. I'm Ruby, she waves her trunk. Hello, I say. I'm Ivan. Are you a monkey, Ruby asks? Certainly not. Bob's ears perk up, although his eyes stay closed. He's a gorilla, he says, and I'm a dog of uncertain heritage. Why did the dog climb your tummy, Ruby asks? Because it's there, Bob murmurs. Is Stella awake, I ask? Aunt Stella is asleep, Ruby says. Her foot is hurting, I think. Ruby turns her head. Her eyes are like Stella's black and long-lashed, bottomless lakes fringed by the tall grass. When is breakfast, she asks. Soon, I say, when the mall opens and the workers come. Where, Ruby twists her head in the other direction. Where are the other elephants? It's just you and Stella, I say, and for some reason I feel like we have let her down. Are there more of you? Not, I say, at the moment. Ruby picked up a piece of hay and cons considered it. Do you, Mom, do you have a mom and a dad? Well, I used to. Everyone has parents, Bob explain, explained. It's unavoidable. Before the circus, I used to live with my mom and my aunts and my sisters and my cousins, Ruby said. She dropped the hay, picks up, twirls it. They're dead. I don't know what to say. I'm not really enjoying this conversation, but I can see that Ruby isn't done talking. To be polite, I say, I'm sorry to hear that, Ruby. Humans killed them, she said. Who else, Bob asked, and we all fall silent. Stella and Ruby. All morning, Stella strokes Ruby, pats her, smells her. They flap their ears, they rumble and roar, they sway as if they're dancing. Ruby clings to Stella's tail. She sleeps under Stella's belly. Sometimes they just lean into each other, their trunks twirled together like jungle vines. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch than any nature show I've ever seen on TV. Home of the one and only Ivan. George and Mac are out by the highway. I can see them through one of the windows. They are next to each other on tall wooden ladders, leaning against a billboard that tells the 
cars to stop and visit the one and only Ivan Mighty Silver, Silverback. George has a bucket and a long-handled broom. Mac has a piece of paper. He slaps one against the billboard. George dips the broom into the bucket. He wets the paper with the liquid from the bucket, and somehow the paper stays in place. They put up many pieces before they are done. When they climb down from the ladder, I see that they've added a picture of a little elephant to the billboard. The elephant has a lopsided smile. She is wearing a red hat, and her hair tail curls like a pig. She doesn't look like Ruby. She doesn't even look like an elephant. I've only known Ruby one day, and I could have drawn her better. Art lesson. Ruby asks a lot of questions. She says, Ivan, why is your tummy so big? And have you ever seen a green giraffe? And can you get me more of those pink clouds like th that the humans are eating? When Ruby asks, what is that on your wall? I explain that it's a jungle. She says the flowers have no scent and the waterfall has no water and the trees have no roots. I am aware of that, I say. It's art, a picture made with paint. Do you know how to make art, Ruby asks. Yes, I do, I say, and I puff up my chest just a little. I've always been an artist. I love drawing. Why do you love it, Ruby asked. I pause. I've never talked to anyone about this before. When I'm drawing a picture, I feel quiet inside. Ruby frowns. Quiet is boring. Not always. Ruby scratches the back of her neck with her trunk. What do you draw anyways? Bananas, mostly. Things in my domain. My drawings sell at the gift store for $25 a piece with a frame. What's a frame? Ruby asks. What's a dollar? What's a gift store? I close my eyes. I'm a little sleepy, Ruby. Have you ever driven a truck? Ruby asks. I don't answer. I then, Ruby asks. Can Bob fly? Memory flashes past, surprising me. I think of my father snoring peacefully under the sun while I try every trick I know to wake him. Perhaps I realize he wasn't really such a loud sleeper after all. Treat. How's that foot, old girl? George asks Stella. Stella pokes her trunk between the bars. She inspects George's right shirt pocket for the treat she brings her every night without fail. George doesn't always bring me treats, Stella. Stella's his favorite, but I don't mind. She's my favorite, too. Stella sees that George's pocket is empty. She gives George a frustrated nudge with her trunk, and Julia giggles. Stella moves to George's left pocket and discovers a carrot. Nimbly, she removes it. Mac walks past. Toilet's plugged up in the men's bathroom, he says. Big mess. I'll take care of it, George sighs. Mac turns to leave. Um, before you go, Mac, George says, you might want to take a look at Stella's foot. I think it's infected again. Darn thing never does heal up right, Mac rubs his eyes. I'll keep an eye on it. Money's tight, though. Can't be calling the vet every time she sneezes. George strokes Stella's trunk. She inspects his pocket one more time, just in case. Sorry, girl, George says as he watches Mac walk away.